Lecture 9, Mathematics and Art. Today we will focus on three different aspects in painting. Perspectives, proportions, and repeated patterns and symmetries. The earliest form of painting can be found is cave painting. This painting is found in Chavez Cave in southern France for more than 30,000 years ago. Another stone drawing, which is roughly of 27,000 years ago, was found in Apollo 11 cave in Namibia, Africa. This is a very famous calculator, which was older than 20,000 years old. It was found in Shangold in Africa. So this calculator is roughly 10 centimeters long, and we can see that there are numbers carved on it. After some prehistoric paintings, let's take a look at some early paintings. This is an Egyptian painting, roughly at 1300 BCE. We can see that it is very colorful, and the portrait humans in it. This one is a Greek vase and can be dated back to 430 BCE. This is a Roman fresco painting, roughly 80 BCE. And we can see that in the portrait a few humans. This one is a Chinese painting from the Eastern Han Dynasty. It also portrays humans. Let's fast forward to pre-Renaissance paintings. These two paintings can be dated roughly at 1300. At that period of time, the painters liked to use red, blue, and gold as color. So that is why these colors are very expensive at that period of time. And this is a Renaissance painting. This one is the very famous The School of Avon by Raphael in 1509. The left one are pre-Renaissance paintings, while the right one are Renaissance paintings. Can you tell if there is any significant difference between them? The main difference is the use of perspective. The first person who used correct linear perspective is Filippo Brunelleschi. He understood that there should be a single vanishing point to which all parallel lines in the plane converge. And he also understand the importance of scales. So he correctly computed the relationship between the actual length of an object as well as its length in the painting. Masaggio also applied Filippo Brunelleschi's method in painting. So you see here all the parallel lines converge and vanish to a single point. This is Disputation of St. Stephen by Victoria Carpaccio in 1514. Another example which used linear perspective is a kiss by the Dutch painter Sir Lawrence Emma Tademard in 1891. This is a draftman drawing a recumbent woman by Albert Dürer. We see that here, in the middle of the painting, there is a perspective machine, which helps the draftsman to have a correct linear perspective. Another painting, which is called An Artist Drawing a Seated Man, was also painted by the same artist, Albrecht Dürer. So we see that he's actually using a linear perspective machine to make sure that the perspective is correct. This one is called a camera obscura. So basically, it is a room which is dark inside, and then it makes use of the properties that light travels in a straight line, so that the painter inside can draw an inverted picture of the scenery. So the mathematics of linear perspective was well developed at the 16th century. We see that in 1811, Brooke Taylor introduced the linear perspective of a three-dimensional object, but the fundamental principles that all parallel lines converge to one single point does not change. We also learned about the one point, two point, and three point perspective. So in one point perspective, we see that parallel lines converge to one single point only. And in two point perspective, parallel lines converge to two single points. While in three point perspective, we can see clearly a three dimensional object. Parallel lines would converge to three different points. The left one is the worm's eye view, and then the right one will be the bird's eye view. So it came to the relationship between painting and mathematics. If we want to paint in a realism approach, that means we want the painting to look very real. Then what we do is, we project a three-dimensional scene onto a two-dimensional plane. On the other hand, while we view the painting, what we do is, the two-dimensional picture will be reconstructed in our mind to become a three-dimensional scene. In a certain sense, the art of painting is to create illusions in the viewer's mind, because you are the one who reconstructed the two-dimensional picture to become a three-dimensional one. Classical realism paintings include Mona Lisa, The Birth of Venus, The Creation of Adam, 
Anamorphic pictures has a distorted projection in a certain point of view. This kind of transformation requires a mathematical operation called a fine transformation. The ambassador's painted by Hans Holmweit the Younger is one of the famous anamorphic pictures. If you will from the bottom, you can see the image of a human skull, which means that there are different interpretations of this anamorphic picture, but we will not dive into them here. There are basically two types of anamorphic pictures. One type is perspective, like this painting. Another type is called mirrored. Usually, we will have a conical or cylindrical mirror to see the original picture. This technique is developed in Ming Dynasty in China. Here are some more examples of anamorphism. Right now, you can pause this video and watch another video on YouTube. The link is already uploaded on Moodle. So basically, 3D street paintings also make use of the same technique. There will be only one vanishing point that we can see the picture. This is another example in the supermarket. Here is another example. It seems that this one is in the airport. This one is on the street. Here is another video on how to construct 3D street painting. You can find the link in Moodle. Disclaimer, I have nothing to do with 100, but I like their video. So after several hundred years, perspective in painting has been abandoned. In the early 20th century, we can see that in the girls of Avalon, Picasso didn't make use of perspective. That is why the girls in the picture do not look real. In the 20th century, another school of technique is called cubism. We can also see that no perspective is used in the painting. In this picture, you can still see some perspective in it. So basically, you can see that the picture is divided into two. In the left-hand side, there's one perspective. So parallel lines converge here. On the other hand, the darker side got another perspective. The parallel lines converge somewhere here. It is not real, it does not make sense. The artists want to demonstrate some ideas in it. 